now um so another thing that um is in conjunction with what i'm talking about being the light of the world is you have been called to share the good news second timothy chapter four i charge you therefore before god and the lord jesus christ who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom preach the word be ready in season and out of season convince rebuke exhort with all long suffering and teaching for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but according to their desires because they have itching ears they will heap up for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables but you be watchful in all things endure afflictions do the work of an evangelist fulfill your ministry So that is what we have been charged to do before God by, I think this is Timothy. Yes. Do not conform to the world. All right. Once you have accepted Christ in your heart, you are changed. You're a different person. You've been born again. All right. And for this, we're going to have to read from uh, the book of first Peter chapter one. It talks about like us being different as being conform be us not you know changing our ways our beliefs because we have read there before you know people will start looking for truths that kind of accommodate them this is why you hear those outrageous statements like oh i'm christian but i'm a witch huh 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 then you it, you'll be surprised you'll be surprised at the things that are on this internet it actually saddens my heart people are doing things in the name of god but it's things that god cannot even be near because god is holy right and we're going to get into that in first peter chapter one yeah we're going to start from first peter um chapter one verse 13 therefore gird up the loins of your mind be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you and the revelation of jesus christ as obedient children not conforming yourselves to the former lusts as in your ignorance but as he who called you is holy you also be holy in all your conduct because it is written be holy for i am holy we serve a holy god we serve a holy god and he has called us to holiness and with the current teachings of the world you will think it's okay to live in sin you will think it's a right but it's not that is why it's a battle every day it's a fight every day for holiness for righteousness but the lord is trying to tell us it's not supposed to be that hard it doesn't have to be that hard if you have him, if you're serving him, if you actually have an active relationship with him, it becomes easier. Because the closer you get to Christ, the less taste you will feel for the things of the world. The less interested you will be in the things of the world. They will not attract you as much. The closer you are to Christ. You also know that verse that talks about draw near to him and he will draw near to you. And if God is drawing near to you, Around him, there is no darkness. There is no unrighteousness. So as he's drawing closer to you, so is holiness. So is his holiness. So is his righteousness drawing near to you. And the closer you draw near to him, the, 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 the more righteous you become. Hold on. Something in my eye. Something is in my eye. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Let's not be ignorant to the things that we know are holy. Because we know the things that are holy. And the things that are holy are the things that God has called us to do. And the things that are, not, are, are unholy, the Lord has mentioned 
quite clearly. And we all know it. All right? So, you know, verse 14 here, I said, As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to your former lusts. The word conforming is kind of blending in to the new you, the new born again version of yourself and still keeping your old ways. Honestly, it's more like keeping your old self by kind of conforming and mixing it with your new life of following Christ. You're kind of trying to bring them together. You're kind of trying to make them work. It doesn't work like that because with that, then you're living a lie. You're living a lie. When you're born again, you're born afresh again, meaning all your former lusts are gone. You can go back and turn away from the deeds that the Lord has delivered you from. There's nothing as bad as going back to the things that the Lord has delivered you from. Isn't it that that verse that still talks about like doing that, like backsliding is as disgusting as a dog going back to eat its own vomit? That's it. The Lord delivers you, you you vomit a lot out, you take all, all that filth, all that dirt, and you trying to conform your former lust to your new life is you going back to that vomit and picking out the things that you just, I don't want to let this go, I really love this weed, I love weed so much, like, you know what I mean, like, that, <laughs> yeah, like, I love, oh my god, I love this carnal music so much. Like, oh yeah, I serve God, I worship God, but oh my God, I love Doja Cat. What? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, make it make sense. So, First Peter chapter 1, verse 22 and 23, it says, Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, right? By accepting grace, you've purified your soul in obeying the truth through the Spirit, in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. So you are born again through incorruptible seed, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. You have been born again with an incorruptible seed and through the word of God, the word of God. So it's what the word of God says. It's not the word of God and also what you say. All right. Because that's how it, that's how people are living these days. It's what, it's what, yes, the Bible says this, but I say this. So, you know, <laughs> and loving one another as verse 22 here says, love one another fervently with a pure heart. It's not that we are lacking love. It's not that I am lacking love. It's because of love that you need to know the truth. And I'm not talking to everybody. Listen, listen, let me make this one thing clear. The Bible has clearly said, he who have ears to hear, he who, you know, he who has eyes to see. It's not for everyone. There's a reason why Jesus was teaching in parables. All right. It's not for everyone. Some people already have their heart turned into stone. You cannot convince them otherwise. And that is okay. But you're not it's not gonna stop me from spreading the word of God to the ones that this message God wants to reach to them. Alright? So being as a non-believer, I know you have experienced this. I know most of you have experienced this constant cycle of being low, finding a worldly fix that brings you high and going back to the same position, if not even worse than how it was in the beginning. Because this world has quick fixes for everything because it's the same thing that is giving you the problems in the first place. The human nature is selfish. The human nature is wicked. Our hearts are deceitful as humans it's selfish it's run by the enemy whose own sole purpose is to seek steal kill and destroy so it's gonna give you problems and it's also gonna give you the remedies so you can trust in it but not god but god is calling you for a forever fix it's not even i don't want to call it a fix you're not broken well some of you are broken most of us, when I was in the world, I know I was broken. All right? 
a lot of you are broken. You are in a place where you feel like there is no hope. No one will understand you. Have you ever tried opening up about your problems and you're just like, there is no way this makes sense. Or you could be talking yourself down and trying to minimize your problems by, eh, it could be worse. But it's eating you up inside. And the more you keep it in, the more you hold it in, it's going to explode and it's going to have serious consequences following it. If you're truly, truly, truly at that point where nothing this world can offer you can help you then maybe it is time to turn back to your maker maybe it is time for you to really think about things from a different perspective i've had we've seen their testimonies all over look at this testimony look them up testimonies from muslims from devil worshippers from atheists strong atheists people who like they look at the bible and call it like a fairy tale or a fictional book or whatever we've have a, we still have a lot of people who hate very loudly on it but we still have a people who have kind of come to see the light and i'm telling you once you see the light once you taste this living water that the lord provides this unconditional love you know i, I know a lot of us are out here just looking for love Love that we will never find on this earth. Let me tell you something. The love that God has for us, it's love you will never find anywhere. I don't want to get emotional because that is how it is. Like, it's love you will never find anywhere. Nowhere in this world offers what God offers. Because God is not of this world. He's not of this world. And there's only one God. One God true living god who loves you so much despite your ignorance because god calls all the days back before we met him before we got to know the truth the days of ignorance and all your sins are usually forgiven like they're they, like god does not keep a record you know you can be battling and say I, i'm not ready for god i did this I, I did this like you're feeling that little tug in your heart you know you have that that tug that you're like no like i don't i don't feel like god i'm ready for god i've done so much like he can't there is nothing that is impossible with god at that moment i felt a touch on my left shoulder and a voice that says i forgive you how could that be possible? Because the hurt Allah is forgiving and merciful. But we cannot know His forgiveness till the day of judgment. So I said, who are you that forgives me? And I feel forgiven today. And he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So I said, what is your name? And he said, Jesus Christ, the living God. Seriously, let's talk about it. Like, who? who? God looked at down at the earth and he saw how sinful the world had become. And you know what he did? You know what he did? And this is why, this is where God's love, like really, we will never be able to understand it because he looked down on the earth and he saw this world is so sinful. Because remember, the, the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin with death. You cannot get away with doing bad things no matter how how my, the world can make you believe that you're getting away with the sins you're doing but at the end of the day justice will be served not by the law of the land you can you can even escape that but by that's why we have god you know he's the who's the one who says vengeance is mine but he looked down on the earth and he said oh my goodness it's so everyone is sinning instead of just finishing us off and I'm, I'm done with them instead of just being like so angry and just saying because he's so holy like he's like god is holy he's holy you know what he decided to do he decided to send his own son he said <laughs> he sent a part of himself his son to come and die for us you tell me you tell me how that makes sense in our little human mind you tell me <laughs> but he chose to give his only begotten son that anyone and he, this is just like, because I, I think it was also kind of, you know, in the Old Testament, people, when people would sin, they would like do all these things. They would kill like animals, you know, offer sacrifices to hide 
their sin because God is so holy he cannot even approach you when you're like covered in sin so, so they had to like do all the sacrifices to kind of just cover themselves and just hide but it wasn't taking away their sin <laughs> so he said let me give you a fix let me let me let me do this let me just send my own son because Jesus again is holy he's a part of God he's a part of him because the three in one let me send my son to come there and live as a human being and pay the price for all of your sins. Anyone who chooses to believe in him, paid off, ransomed, free. The devil has nothing on your head. You know? Because the devil is the accuser of saints, right? So, once you believe in God, once you trust in him, once you choose to be born again, to leave your old life behind, and choose him and follow him, it's all forgiven, it's all forgotten this unconditional love because even in our walk it gets tough it gets tough right the devil will throw all sorts of things at you be it people you will even start beefing with your family you know the people who you thought you could trust you will start beefing with your closest friends someone who you thought through thick and thin these people will stick by me nope you'll start beefing and it's simply because you just they they they, they don't see life the way you see it anymore it's different you're different you change but you know that's kind of the point so all those who choose to believe him follow him and accept to be born again of this incorruptible seed abandon your former lust leave your old life behind you're literally becoming a new person all right you're tired you're sick and tired of just this world let me tell you something the Lord, the doors are still open. The Lord still loves you. The Lord is waiting on you. It's imagine it's on you. The the ball the ball is on your yard, court of the the your courtyard. It's on your side. <laughs> He's as I said before, we serve a God who is a gentleman. He's not gonna just break down the wall, the the doors you put in your heart, and just be like, ah, I'm here. And then you have this ah oh, moment. Nah. You have to let him in. You have to open your heart. The Bible is still that he's always at the door just knocking. Knocking. Anytime you feel low, he's out there like, I can help you. I'll be the one to talk to. And once you you know, once you get into this relationship with Christ, whenever you have these moments, because they will come up, you know. The the world is very brutal. The world is very brutal to us Christians. So you know the enemy does not the, the enemy does not sleep he will haunt you when you're sleeping he will haunt you when you're awake he'll haunt you when you do this this but we are protected we're covered i'm not trying to scare you now <laughs> from the christian faith the christian walk is 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 a good is fun because the only thing is you're the child of god so you have to think of god like we, he calls himself our heavenly father in the Lord's Prayer, he says, our Heavenly Father. So, he's our Father. Now, you're a child of God, right? Now, you as a child of God, you never really grow up. Like, you never outgrow. You don't reach 18 in the kingdom years. And God is like, okay, go out there. And nah, nah. You'll forever be his child. No matter how old you are, even when you get to 80, you're still a child of God. So, the thing is, you just remain a child of God. And you follow him, you trust him, you cling to him, and he takes care of everything else. And I'm going to release a video about this because I'm not, the Christian walk, people like to make it, in, I, people, me being one of them, like I've, I can, I, I'm, because I'm, I don't like hiding, I don't like hiding about how the struggles that I faced within my Christian walk, you know what I mean? Like, because it's real, it's real, it happens to the most of us, right? So, but like, it's not hard like i'm putting it to be kind of you know what i mean it's not it's it's easy once you understand that he is your father because as a as a child now in like normal terms you have this loving if you have a loving parents imagine you were raised by normal loving parents parents who would do anything for you you know what i mean parents who love you through anything to whatever phases you go through parents who make sure you are well provided for so you are a child all right you don't have a job 
you don't have money i'm talking now in the normal times you don't have money you know you everything you expect will come from your parents right and i'm saying you just imagine like you were raised like because i know it's not the same for everybody but like picture that you know like uh, you don't have a job you don't have money so what are you gonna do this whole world is run by money so you know your food mom dad i'm hungry mom dad i need this mom dad i need this that's the kind of the relationship once you think get into that mental thinking and also uh how children trust their parents like they can be doing the most dangerous stuff you know what i mean but they're so oblivious i'm talking about a child who's like let's say two years old they can walk a little they can wobble away from you but they have so much trust that even if they're walking onto a cliff like their parents will catch them like this child doesn't know doesn't know danger right because they know that my mom and dad like they got me that when you get into that mentality when it comes to your walk with christ it becomes easy because you know now the only difference is that that two-year-old does not know danger so he's she's gonna crawl out to that cliff but you know danger but you need to be in that mentality thinking of that two-year-old to a point where as long as i have my fix on you as long as i have my faith in you as long as i've trusted everything to you i should be good you'll be provided for you will be you will be your father that loving father that most of us probably don't have you know what i mean <laughs> but who's who we're not, talk, we're not gonna talk about that my father in heaven is the one who's got me he's got me. like everything i need i ask him like literally my life can go upside down and trust me it has i've been in situations where i was just like you got this <laughs> i'm your child so i know i'm safe and things are going to work out like that's how it is it's not hard it's not hard so yeah it's really not hard once you be like and if you're a baby christian you know what i mean you know what i mean those people have just recently received christ in the arts you know what i mean there's a place where you're just so reckless. Not reckless. I don't want to say reckless. But you're just so not caring. I don't care. <laughs> My enemies are mad. So what? Like, you know, like that's where you that's where you be. Like the devil is mad that I came to Christ. What is gonna what's he gonna do? Because you're so fixed into him. You've just experienced his love. You're in there and that you're literally like this. That's how you're supposed to be throughout your whole Christian walk mentality because obviously you'll grow from this and god will get you know will allow you to start walking you start you know crawling around and you will go back into some holes you know what i mean <laughs> but god god's got your back so <laughs> if i've lost you let me bring you back again if you are if you've never received Christ, if you've never experienced what I'm talking about, this unconditional love, and you're curious about it, you can feel that little tug in your heart, in your spirit, maybe it's time. It's time. The time is now or never. Because, you know, the door will not always be open. You know, a time will come when the Holy Spirit will not be on this earth anymore. And this grace and mercy will not be here anymore and it will just be god's wrath because the wicked will be punished for their sins and the wages of sin is the wages of sin is death the sins of wages. yes the wages of sin is death right yeah <laughs> the wages of sin is death so a time will a time will come where the holy spirit will no longer be on earth and all the wicked shall be punished and you know but for now the door is open and there's grace and there's mercy but yeah you should come to christ i'm talking to the people who are hearing me not just hearing me hearing the holy spirit even if you were following christ before but you somehow you know you got sucked in in the world you know you kind of forgot it's your time to come back to christ God is still there. I'm telling you, once you are chosen by God, you are chosen. You cannot hide. 
You cannot hide. You know, even David said, like, even if I make my bed in hell, you are there. Your presence is there. He will find you if he chose you. Because God chooses people even before even he forms you in your mother's womb. He chooses you. So you, they know themselves. You know yourself. You know you are, you, are, you, are, you are fighting it. You know you are delaying it. You know you're putting it in the back of your head. You know you hear all these Christians preach everywhere. You're just like. Mm. 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 You can feel that little tug. Now is the time. Now is the time. Right now. And if you do, and if you have completely decided, remember, it's a fight, but it's an easy fight, okay? It's a fight. We need to stand firm. We need to ser- seek righteousness. Do not, do not listen to corrupt teachers who tell you it's okay to still have live your old life while you're still a, a new child of God. No, once you're a new child of God, you're literally born again. And the closer you stay to God... The further away you forget, even, like, you just can't go back. Don't go back. But if you have decided to follow Christ with your whole heart, if you want to experience this unconditional love, trust me, the love that God gives, I don't know, I, see how I keep on digressing, but the love that God gives, you get, it's just because you can't find it anywhere else. You cannot. You cannot find it in these quick fixes, in the drugs, in the friends, in the sex. You cannot find it there. It's not there. It's not in the women. It's not in the men. It's not there. The unconditional love you're looking for, that, that void, everyone has this, everyone has this God-sized hole in their hearts in their lives in their spirits that no nothing can fill apart from god nothing nothing in this world will fill that god-sized hole apart from god himself when we are broken we go to the ones the one who made us that is god he's the only one who can fix us the world will give you lots of bandages but it will not help you have to go to your creator. The one who created you is the one who has the fix that will fix it forever, for eternity. And the reward, you get to dwell with him for eternity. Like. So if you have decided, if you have chosen to, let me accept this. Let me open this door. Let me follow this God. Because I love him and I'm interested. Let me just choose this. Remember, you're choosing it for yourself. And it's the best decision you could ever make. And I'm really proud of you. And it's as easy as just repeating this prayer after me. Believing it with your whole heart. And just accepting Christ in your heart. Just repeat these prayers after me. It's kind of like a guide into this. And once you believe this and you believe it with your whole heart. I need you to go find i don't know a christian friend like from there on the holy spirit will guide you on what to do but do not do not go back to your old life you need to believe it in your heart in your heart like you're completely changed you need to open the door and let him in and he will do the rest by his grace and his mercy so just close your eyes and repeat this prayer after me and let god do the rest say dear god i am a sinner i have been far away from you i have been lied to by the world but father my heavenly father i come before you once again surrendering all to you i now believe that you are the Son of God, the living God, and that you came on this earth and died for my sins, that I might dwell with you forever. Dear God, help me in my new journey. Help me to abide in you. Help me to draw near to you Help me to resist temptations. Help me to fix my eyes on you. As I have surrendered myself to you, 
I surrender everything to you. And through this, rub my name in the book of death and write it in the book of life. From now on, I declare that I am born again through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and I will live and not die to declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Thank you, Jesus. I worship you and I glorify you. I pray this believing and trusting in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. Welcome, welcome to the family of Christ. Welcome to the church, to the body of Christ. We are now brothers and sisters. You are the child of the most high king, the child of of the Most High King. That is an honor. You are royalty now. You are not, you're not to hide yourself for you are, you're a princess, you're a prince. You are the light of the world. Do not hide. Go out, share the good news, share your testimonies. Make sure you have a witness. Make sure you've told somebody that I have received the word of God today. I am born again and welcome. I know that the presence of God is a life changer and you could be going through it right now. <laughs> uh, but go out there and witness to people that you have been born again and find yourself a good church or a good sermon uh, or like a you know, preacher. Um, you can follow me. Uh, for more uh, you know just you know I do a lot I, I'm I'm gonna go back to doing a lot of Christian content and just posting about my walk and things like that and I'd like you to join me on this journey so yeah follow me follow you know good preachers out there teachers of the word I don't know what else <laughs> but I'm mostly just yes your relationship with Christ work on it make sure it's an active relationship having conversations with him he's your father he's your dad he's your dad it's okay to call him dad dad you know that's who he is he he has asked us to love him like that like like his heaven once you do that it's so easy it becomes so easy they walk the good fight it's an easy fight and let me tell you something in this fight know that we're fighting a war a battle that has already been won He's already been won. You know why? Jesus Christ, he wears the victor's crown. So the the battle has already been won. But you just need to stand your ground. And, and the thing is, the battle is not even ours. It's not ours. It's his. He fights the battles. But you just need to stand your ground. Do not get waved. Do not lose hope. The devil will throw all sorts of things at you, I'm telling you. But stand firm. Feel free to follow Feel free to share, feel free to like, feel free to comment even your testimonies and yeah, just what you think for my, you know, my M MVPs, the ones who've been here from day one. What up? What up? What up? Yeah. Let, comment down below how you think what's going on. Like, you know, y'all can, y'all not allowed to yell at me. We're not going to talk about the, 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 <laughs> the gap. We're not, we're going to ignore it. Just push it away and we're gonna rock with what i got right now <laughs> but yeah just comment down below where, where y'all being how you how's your um how's your journey being and you know share share to your friends you know let's let's do this together let's do this together i am so excited for this new journey expect more from me yes because the lord has been busy with me Yes, yes. Uh, I'm just excited for this. So just make sure you share, like, whatever. I don't know. You know, all those things that YouTubers say. So yeah, do all those. Remember, be ye holy, for I am holy. That's the word that in, in my heart. Do not conform yourself to the things of the world. Please don't 
do not try to fit in do not try to be nice let me tell you something about our our, our, our religion you see this this thing the bible this thing is <laughs> it's very unpopular <laughs> the most unpopular thing is this the world will not like you but again who cares you know what i mean like who cares all right so have a great day uh be blessed remember keep your head high. keep your head high child of god and for all the newcomers welcome to the family it's only gonna get better from here yep promise 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 but don't take my word for it take his word for it yes not mine his word he's promised to be with you through it all he's gonna be with you through it all and have fun have fun remember to have fun it's fun it's fun being a christian please don't let people lie to you like oh so what do you guys do for fun as christians we have fun we have a lot of fun fun you will never understand because <laughs> you don't see the way things we the way we do and it is what it is it is what it is so i'm getting tired now i'm gonna go bye <laughs>